uh, when it's an emerging mode, uh, it looks like some of the signs of emerging modes are there. Often the return ratios are poor. Uh, the valuations optically seemed higher yeah. because the company yeah. has not started churning cash out. Mm -hmm. How would you value a business in that state or rather yeah. value a moat in that state? Yeah, sure. No, great question. Um, so that's where a discounted cash flow analysis really becomes useful. And it's not that DCF is a magic bullet and it's better. It just it forces you to think through the cash economics of the business over the long run as opposed to the gap accounting characteristics over the short run, which is what a PE will do. So in the case of a business that say it's growing quickly, returns are poor today, um, but it looks like there's something there. It looks like there could be a moat. What I would say is this, think about variable versus, think about three things, opportunity set, fixed, and variable costs, okay? So what is the opportunity set here, right? How big could this thing get? What could they sell to people in five, three years time, five years time, whatever? Um, and then say, okay, to get there, they will need to invest something. Right? There's some number amount, they'll need to build new plants, hire new engineers, whatever it might be. And then there'll be a flow through too. Something amount will drop to the bottom line. And over time, more should drop to the bottom line if it's a decent business, right? Who knows if it is. Um, and so I mean, you just, and you just kind of math that out, right? Just DCF it out and then say, okay, this company could go from a 6% return on capital to a 12% return on capital in five years and start generating free cash flow and then we get a hockey stick after that as you kind of do it out. So for example, we're looking at a business right now called SimCorp, which does um, basically ex in very expensive backend software for huge asset managers, like 100 billion plus asset managers. Um, could runs the whole back office suite. Now, they've been selling, basically they've been growing about five, 6% per year for the past few years because they've not done well in the US market for a bunch of reasons that we think may be fixable. That's what we're trying to figure out. But Basically, we've talked to them, and that 5 6% growth pretty much covers their cost structure now and gets them about a low 20s margin. But they incre every incre bit of incremental growth over that, so going from 5% to 10%, you get an 80 to 90% drop through. You know, and, then, and then that then you know, takes your margins from probably low 20s up a lot. But you don't know what that number is until you think it through. Another, good, so another example. So, when Morningstar initiated on, on MasterCard, and when it went public at 40, 50 bucks a share, you know, the, um, I remember our analyst wanted to put like a $100, $110 price target on it. And I was like, dude, you're nuts, man. This thing's coming public at like 40 bucks. We've got to stick our necks out that far. Come on. You know, this thing, how, how good a business is this? And he, what he did is he just walked through fixed versus variable. That basically, OK, very little variable cost in this business. You've got a fixed cost of a network, you know, the data processing network. But then of the, the incremental revenue, tons will flow down to the bottom line. And this is where, and this is a geek thing, but you guys may have, when you're modeling out a high growth company, don't model in percentages, model in dollars. So it optically looks weird to say margins are going to go from 13% to 25. Ah, that's, this is huge. My god, that's never going to happen. So don't do it in percentages. Don't do operating margins doing from x to y. Think about, OK, fixed versus variable. How many dollars will they need to spend to get each dollar of additional revenue? And then see what operating margin falls out of that. And you may come to a very different conclusion. 